coming. And uh, this talk is Trends in Web Application Security. And uh, I'll be introducing you to Ofer Shazef from Breach Security. Good morning, everyone. Uh, I would have preferred not to use this microphone and look like a pop star or something, but it seems that for the recording I need to. Um, I probably have the most non-technical presentation around, uh, but I do hope to make it interesting anyway. Uh, and I think that the, the subject is important because I think there is no security if we cannot measure what we provide to our organizations by doing more security. So I'm not going to talk about how to solve the application security problem and not how to break into things. I'm going to talk about how to measure it. How can we determine what to solve, what to protect, and what not to protect? I will base my discussion on a project I'm running within the Web Application Security Consortium, which is a sister organization to OWASP, which is called the Web Hacking Incident Database. It's a project that tracks security incidents um, just for that matter. So that's me in better times. Uh, uh, th that's when it's on the web so people will be more personal and know who, who's the speaker. Uh, I work for Bridge Security. We make WAFs and that's all I'm allowed to say about my company. My job is product management. Uh, which has less to do with security, but until around half a year ago, I ran security research. Um, and as a result, I'm very, very involved in many, many open source and community projects. For example, I run the Israeli chapter for us. And actually, we had a, a conference just last week in Israel with 250 people in it. And, and as I said, I'm from Israel. And breach security, I said I'm not going to say anything about breach. So what are we going to talk about today? First of all, I'm going to discuss why is it so hard to know what is the risk, how to measure the risk from vulnerable web applications. I'll show how we do it today, and I'll show the shortcomings, com the problems with the current approaches. Later, I'll present to you the web hacking in the database, which is an interesting tool to try to analyze the threat from web-based web applications. I also discuss its shortcomings. It's not the perfect tool also. I'll summarize the results of our last annual survey, the 2007 survey or statistical report based on the Web Hacking Incident Database. And then I'll go into what we see this year, where things are going. And the winner, okay. So, the basic equation that we'll talk about is how to calculate risk. It's very boring, it's not technical, but it's the sole reason that our companies are paying us in order to provide security, to reduce risk. And risk is composed of three things. Threat, is there anyone out there who's after us? Vulnerability. If there is someone out there who is after us, does he have anywhere, any way to get into us, to, to, to breach our security? And the third one is the outcome. Okay, there's a bad guy, he wants to break into our organization, uh, he has ways to do that. How much would we lose if he succeeds? So these are, this is an old equation, it's not new. The main question is how does it translate to web applications? So we know web applications are vulnerable. You'll hear about it all through the next two days. Um, web applications are unique. So each one has its own vulnerabilities, making signature-based system inadequate. Uh, web applications change frequently because it's easy to change them. It's easy to uh, create new, uh, you know, a new marketing campaign with three new forms. And if in the past they were at least simple and our developers understood how to what, what's happening behind the scenes, today they are very complex with Ajax and Web2. Uh, as we will see today, web applications are, are threatened. The bad guys are after them. It didn't used to be that way. That's the reason I started the Web Hacking Incident Database project, to try to track that, to try to understand if the bad guys are after us. Uh, and today I think the question is, is, is simple. They are. And we'll discuss later 
the need for a business model for the bad guys. If there's no business model, if there's no way a bad guy can do real money, and I'm not talking about script kiddies, I'm talking about organized crime, we are not threatened. But we are today. And lastly, the impact. Uh, if somebody gets into our websites, is there a potential issue for us? And the answer is yes, because everything is web today, and if somebody gets in, they can do whatever they want. Stop us from doing business by taking our sites down, taking out information. Well, you know all that. The main question is then, how do we measure this risk? It's not easy. Why isn't it easy? The first reason is that web attacks our stealth. Unlike other types of threats, such as viruses or worms, which are very widespread, so everybody knows about them, many web attacks, especially until 2008, were spearheaded, were targeted. So nobody had the real reason to talk about it. If a bank is getting hit by a web hack, the best thing for the bank is to hide. The other problem is that organizations do not have insight into their web applications. Think about a security guy who has no application background, monitoring his IDSs and, and firewalls and having a security information manager. He doesn't know if he's being hacked. We, we, we make application firewalls. When we get to organizations and we install, it's always installed first out of line, no blocking, and we see hacking going on. And the organization never knew about it. As a result, since people don't know about hacks, as people try to um, uh, hide hacks, most statistics, as we'll see in the following slides, are skewed. There are certain types of attacks that just has to be dis have to be disclosed. And we see a lot of them. The two most common ones are defacements, because defacement is disclosed by definition. And leakage of information, because for the last few years, a lot of governments uh, have rules that require organization to disclose or publish a breach in which uh, sensitive information leaked. So if somebody got to a bank and stole $10 million from a specific customer, nobody has to tell us about it. It can remain a secret. The bank has to solve the issue with the customer. But if even 10 or a significant number of, of, of sensitive information records leaked, it has to be disclosed. And lastly, and that's what I'm trying to change today, a lot of the discussion in this field is by uh, parties that have an interest. Um, you all know that vendors are biased, that vendors tell you stories. Uh, that's why you come to the OS conference, because it's not about vendors. Uh, but on the other hand, in this specific area of web applications, you have the developers. And developers tend to think that their code is perfect, or at least not admit it's not perfect. So this is the other side of everybody has an interest. So what can we do today? How can we try to measure the risk? There are many databases which discuss and 